Okay, so what we got here is fabric you can get just about anywhere. This came from the thrift store. Uh, it doesn't matter where, whether it's bed sheets or whatever, you know. Uh, this is what I would use for like the inside garment of, of my robe. You know, it's kind of like uh, the underwear type deal. You know, this is just, you know, absorbs the sweat, so on and so forth. You know, and uh, if it's winter, if you want to use all natural fiber, it's good for uh, keeping in the heat. I'm very comfortable wearing such. You can get them in red, white, blue. You can get them in black, perhaps. You know, this is what I would use for like the inside of my robe, or maybe, you know, in the summertime I would use this white material to uh, fashion a robe out of that would be thin, uh, but yet not completely see-through and comfortable, and it's 100% cotton, so that'd be great. And this bundle of fabric that can make me three different robes, uh, from what I've seen so far cost me three bucks. That's a lot cheaper than getting at Walmart or a type of fabric shop that runs four dollars a yard or two dollars a yard or even on clearance a dollar a yard. You know, so I would go for that. Uh, towards the end of a little sketch on how to make your robe for your festivals and rituals that you're performing and so on and so forth. Okay, what we have done here is this is a miniature. Uh, this would represent the roll that you get. All right, so the entire length of this down would be e equivalent to say seven or eight yards. Okay, then we'll stretch it out, and it'll look like this. All right, so once you got it stretched out, and you just want to make a simple row, you can take this and fold it straight down, and put it back out on the floor. So, now what you want to do from this point is, since you've got the front here, the back there, you want to go ahead and cut. It doesn't have to be precise measurements. What I normally do is, is I start on one side, and I'll go ahead and I'll show you. Because this one here will be a costume for my son. He's much too young to start practicing uh, witchcraft at this age and his option is open to whatever he wants to do in his life, so we'll leave it simply as that. Okay, so as I explained before, you got your front, you got your back, all right? And you know about how long you are, so you would measure your shoulders here at the top all the way down to wherever your feet is, all right? So my son is probably going to be about like not, I can hem it up and fold the fabric under to match his length. Or if you want to, you can make a belt out of the leftover material that's here and make that into your belt by folding it under and under and sewing it together and voila, you have a nice belt to use. If you're wider, attach these two together, more belt. Okay. So what you want to do is, as I said before, this is your shoulders, this will be your feet. Once you start up, you know, if this is just a basic robe that you want to make, not spend a whole lot of time on it, you can start there. And it doesn't have to be perfect in any way. That's just for him to where he can put seams into it. And uh, if you have your stitching there, you can later go back and cut off the access. That's perfectly fine. taking shape. This would be one arm, one leg. What I do is I take the fabric, I'll actually fold it over to make it as equal as I can, like so, and I will come up and I will cut it from up here. church if you wanted to make like a little Jesus robe outfit, put a sash on it for your Christmas play or whatever you want to do. You know, it's each your own. 
so I've cut it identical. So what we have now at this point is a little baby rope. <laughs> right? And this would probably fit my son right here. So this would be good. He can be like a little, I don't know, he can be like the Grand, the Grand Reaper. versa, take it and do it up to adjust the height on it, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to put a hood on it, this is a side, I'll show that later. Oh, I, sh I should mention that this whole fabric that I'm using is absolutely wonderful. It does not fray or anything else. It's just not an all-natural fiber uh, like is uh, Genshin Hughes, but it's, it's very comfortable. If you want to make a hood, something similar such as that, right? You can see that little hood. And take it and do a little stitch along here and up through there. Take it, open it up like so, once it's sewed together, and you'll sew that. Okay, and here's my version. Here's mine. It's much, much longer. It, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should point out that our house is haunted. Sometimes there's noises coming from the back, and that's pretty much what that was, I guess. But uh, anyway, um, this is pretty much mine right here. Yeah, the length does come down, as I showed you on the uh, smaller version for uh, infants or kids. And it's done in the same manner. It's done up through the neck the same way. Uh, as you can see, you can see where I had cut on the fabric straight down. It comes straight down through there. And uh, vice versa, exact carbon copy of the other side. And the robe itself, as I have showed you, does attach. It can come straight up if you wish. Uh, I don't ever wear the hood itself, but it's there. Uh, once in a blue moon or full moon, I'll actually use the hood for uh, meditation, but otherwise it's just there because that's part of the design, it's passed down and so on and so forth, and I've never really seen a robe without one, really, uh, but they can be made and uh, some do wear it that way among other preferences, but this is my version right here. As you can tell, it does have a flap for the belt, it does hang over, I haven't hemmed it at the bottom yet, so I do have a lot of access hanging over the edge. But when I do get a chance to hem it up, this will come down and equal up to the length. And I do wear a belt. Uh, and that's what I, uh, you know, put my wallet in in a small bag on my side if I'm out at a con or, you know, uh, just out really anywhere I feel comfortable wearing my outfit.